so today I'm with John, who works at Vercel, and recently Vercel used um, live blocks to power the live reactions uh, on one of their uh, website. Yeah, thanks for having me here. I'm John. I'm I'm currently a design engineer at Vercel. Uh, what that means is I get to work with our awesome design team and everyone else at the company to build amazing experiences online. Uh, so the live reactions using live blocks was is is an example of one of those. I mean, obviously. I'm pretty sure everybody listening to this uh, knows Vercel. Can you tell us more about that project? Um, what what was it for, and uh, how LifeBlocks was able to help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we wanted to add like a real time experience to our Shipweek website. Without the live reactions features, user would users would just be watching a live stream, and that's kind of boring. Uh, so what we wanted to do was add a little bit more like interactivity and like real timeness to the whole experience. So we wanted to add like real time uh, like reactions uh, with everyone else watching the stream. We want you to be able to see and interact with everyone else as well. So the way we did that was we used live blocks to stream all of the reactions that other people were sending to yourself. No, that was pretty cool. I remember uh, uh, you know firing up a bunch a bunch of emojis, uh, which which was uh, which kind of made the live uh, live stream like a lot more interactive. And um, it seems like you guys got quite a bit of um, traction or, I guess, visibility, uh, not only because of that, obviously, the, the content itself of the conference was something, you know, I'm sure a lot of developers were looking forward to, but curious to hear, like, what you got out of this yeah. as a company. Yeah, so we got, like, 300, 340,000 total reactions sent during, during the live stream. Uh, and then for, like, social media stats, I don't have those off the top of my head, but... but <laughs> It definitely took up some of the social mind share at that time, along with all, all of the other awesome stuff that was getting announced. I know we had like a, a shared uh, Slack channel uh, as you guys were working on this project. You spent quite a bit of time like nailing kind of the micro interactions of this. I know that I remember seeing like different versions of how like the the emojis was kind of like fire up. Like I know you had one that was like kind of flying up, one that was a little bit slower. I'm curious like about this is not directly related to LiveBlocks, but I'm curious about like, how you built this and like what what inspiration, um, what inspired you to do this, and um, kind of the different different versions you had. Yeah. So for the animations, it's just a matter of like writing out the bare bones of the animation first, and then tweaking anything from like the duration mm -hmm. to like the tweening functions to uh, like other properties to like make it feel just right. Uh, it was a balancing act between like making making like one single like reaction like feel and look right versus also like a hundred reactions per second looking right. And did you use any libraries for this? I'm I'm curious like um like framer motion or whether or did you just build all of this from scratch like the animation side of things? Mm -hmm. Uh, I th I think part of it was written using framer motion, but the actual yeah. like animation of like the emoji floating up like that's using plain CSS. I remember building like a, a similar thing, like where we used basically like two, kind of two like CSS animations, like one that would go like sideways and one that would like go from bottom to top, mm. and it kind of like mix them together, and you get this nice kind of floating uh, effect. Is that yeah. kind of the trick you used, or something different? Yes. So if you were if you were to hold up like a ruler to the screen and like watch a emoji like float from the bottom up, like you would think it's going on like a curved arc, right? But it's actually just going up in a straight line and it's an optical illusion mm. making it seem like it's actually traveling inside of an arc. And that's because we translate translate in Y, but but we also translate translate scale and also mm. the rotation. So, so to us, that looks like it's traveling in an arc, but it's not. And also like translating in arcs in CSS is actually like kind of hard. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering, like, also, because there's probably two paths there in terms of how you want to animate stuff, right? There's, you know, the person actually reacting, and so you want to have that, like, direct feedback that you've taken an action on the page. But there's also the thousands of people watching that stream at the same time, leaving reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you handle that kind of load or like being able to have all those people in the same room at the same time watching the same stream and potentially having like hundreds of them kind of firing up emojis 
uh, at the same time. Uh, I wonder how you handle that um, on the other end. Yeah, so we took two main approaches to that. Like the first approach was we, we wanted like local reactions to to be like a first class citizen. So in the event that live blocks went down or like some error happened on on the back end, we wanted we wanted the local stuff to to still work. So we actually split like like two data sources. There's a local data source where like every single click immediately produces produces a response. So we don't have to wait for like a round trip back to life blocks. Mm. So that makes stuff feel super fast. And in the event in the event of the backend going down, like the local stuff still works fine. So that means that you get like very fast feedback as a user. You click, it happens right away. You just assume it's gonna work, mm -hmm. um, and then all the stuff you receive then you kind of sort of batch those uh, those reactions together so that you don't show like hundreds kind of happening at the same exact second. Otherwise, that would probably get a bit messy. Mm, yeah. So for Livebox also did did like the throttling for us because you limit the amount of people in the room plus you batch the number of like, or mm -hmm. you batch sending the responses. We also limited it on the front end because based on the person's device, you don't want to be sending like a thousand images or you don't mm -hmm. want to be painting a thousand images all at once. So we actually cap it to a hundred images per emoji being painted at a given time. Yeah, it makes sense. What made you think of like using live blocks for this? And um, would you have been, would you have been able to, to do that uh, yourself if, um, if, if you didn't work with, with us for on this project? Yeah, so the actual original idea to like build this for was from one of our designers named Al Monk. Uh, he drew, mm -hmm. he drew up a sketch in in Figma, and then it was my job to make it come to life. So original OG credits goes to Al Monk, and then for 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 using live blocks, uh, Lindsay, who is our VP of engineering, he he knows everything about engineering. So like when. When Al went to him with this idea, like Lindsay immediately knew to use life blocks. Uh, we could have built this ourselves, uh, uh, but I mostly do front end stuff. I'm I'm a complete noob with all of the back end stuff. Our back end probably would have gone down. Plus, we only had two days to do this. Like, this was like a super last minute thing where like we want to add this to make to make the overall experience a lot better. No, that's that's good to hear. Um, obviously, like you know, like the main, like maintaining the, you know, the WebSocket server, being able to scale that, and having like all like thousands of people kind of in the same room reacting to to that video would definitely be a little bit challenging if you're gonna have to do that yourself. So um, I'm glad we're we're able to help. How has been your experience working with? The live blocks team. Yeah, like I said, I'm like a complete noob to all of the like infra stuff. So like having that shared Slack channel was like having like a souped up Chat GPT for me to ask any <laughs> stupid question I had. Uh, everyone on the team was like super helpful with everything, super responsive. Uh, I wasn't expecting you guys to be super responsive, but it it worked out super well. I think Chat GPT would probably be faster to respond, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'll take the compliment. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure that people on the team are going to be uh, happy to read this for sure. All right. So, well, thanks for, for taking the time to, to chat today. Um, where can people find out about you and learn more about Vercel and maybe learn more about that, that uh, live reaction experience that you built? Yeah. Um, so to learn more about the live reactions, we're actually working on a blog post that will be posted maybe in the next month or so. And then if nice. you, you can find me on Twitter, um, my handle is John Famous. Well, thank you so much, John. Thanks for taking the time and uh, have a good, uh, good end of the week. You too. See ya. See ya.